everybody, welcome back to another land, please. Binding of Isaac Atrith Plus, settling in for a good day of Isaac. Let me take a little hydration break right at the start here. Oh, I've been working hard. Finish the intro, time to take a hydration break. It's how a lot of people study. I'm not trying to call you out. Oh, I opened the textbook. All right, just check Twitter really quick. Red ascends. Okay, give me a little Facebook, phone, Snapchat check. You get the idea. Dude, this is a pretty terrible attribute start, but a great item start. 18 rated fire is like, unforgivable is not the right word, because I, I forgive it for giving me uh, Shoop the Whoop as well. Uh, but it's as real bad. Luckily, you know, the way I've, you know, operated on the assumption of the game working, Yara could be interesting early here. Um, Yum heart. Yikes, dude. Um, is that uh, essentially... That's not how you say that word. Essentially, our first tiers upgrade should be disproportionately good as a result of the fact that the run sort of sucks to begin with, uh, like DPS-wise. Shoop the Whoop can really carry us. If we can get a, a damage or tiers upgrade, on this floor, or like literal HP, like red hearts, I'll be for it. But, uh, and dude, let's not sleep on the fact that, you know, Big Chubb is helping us out a great deal here. Now, this is not going to be anybody's favorite way to use a Yara rune, but it's either this or hold it until like the end of the game. So I'm just going to walk in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch you with one of these, dude. I don't do this very often, but I think, you know, right now is a pretty prudent decision. Get another spirit hard, get some... We got our key out of it. That's about it. We got a strength card. It's not a bad get. Growth hormones. Speed and damage. Okay, all's forgiven. I actually am perhaps foolishly going to check the curse room as well. I think it's worth a quarter of our HP, and I say it like that to emphasize the severity of the decision. I think it's worth a quarter of our HP for us to see if there's something going on in here that might give us a benefit. See you at the crossroads, crossroads. It's not, it's not what I was hoping for. It was, you know, like the worst item in the game, but... Oh, well. Life goes on. We're probably, even if I play, you know, a lot of Isaac today, we're probably not gonna play enough to even have a chance to get to 50 wins, but... Oh, just remember, I've said this before, 50 wins, you know, is definitely a milestone. It's on the list of milestones, there's no doubt about it, it's a big one. Um, but every run is worth the same as 50. 50 is a nice round number, but, you know, in order to get to 50, you gotta do 44. You gotta do 17. You gotta do all sorts of numbers on the way, so... You know, a goal is one thing, but you got to, every step on the staircase is equal. If your goal is to get up the staircase, you know, you can't uh, Google, how do I take uh, the staircase 17 steps at a time, okay? You, every step is its own step. It has to be done before you can progress to the next one. Most of the time. It's not a metaphor that applies for everything. Sometimes you can, you know, if you're doing like couch to 5k to become a, you know, a middle distance jogger and you can already run for 20 minutes uninterrupted you probably can skip the first few weeks of couch to 5k you're almost there already dude um so i appreciate the tears upgrade here but uh you know in other circumstances i mean specifically in this one you can't win two runs at a time so it, it applies good news is and i mean this run is is coming together without a doubt now um, the good news is we can always use our strength card to trick the game into giving us a deal with the devil for free. So, you know, the long tail effects of this Yara rune exist. Sure. Um, we can use, uh, I mean, the Yara rune as a jumping off point to maybe get our run really started. But well, hey, we'll see. What do we get? Well worth it. Now we can take a deal with the devil, you know, we could pay proper price for a deal with the devil as well. Are we gonna do so? Oh, almost certainly not, I mean. 
I was just thinking maybe we're gonna go back for that stone chest. You know how it goes, you know, early on in an Isaac run, if things are even slightly touchy, we're gonna talk a little bit about Isaac. After that, who knows? I got... any Anybody else here married? Put your hands up if you're married. Today's like... It's... Uh, I don't want to call it... I'm trying to think of the right word. Because I don't want it to come across wrong. My wife has uh, plans tonight. She and her quintet are getting dinner. It's like... Freedom. In the sense that I get to choose what I'm gonna eat for dinner tonight, and I could eat things that normally, because we eat together, like literally 300 and, probably 350 days out of 365, you know? It's a long time. I'm not saying like I'm stoked, yeah, let's just grab this, that, uh, you know, my wife's not here tonight. What I'm saying is, dude, when the cat's away, the mice will go on DoorDash and order a meal that I oftentimes want, but uh, my wife's not necessarily that into. And it cuts both ways, let me say. Um, you know, if if I already ate dinner, uh, you know, maybe I was out or something like that. She's like, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, I already ate. She's like, oh, dude, I'm going to get, you know, some traditional Korean food that Ryan's not that big of a fan of. Now tonight, I'm like, dude, I'm gonna order from that Indian place that's like super spicy. We we order Indian food from time to time, but and it's great. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like it's it's like bouged up Indian food, which is fine. But I want I want something that comes in a styrofoam container and is is gonna make me regret it the next day. I'm looking forward to. I mean, it's. You know, it's self-destructive, but simultaneously, I, I can't wait, dude. Can't hardly wait. Let's put it that way. Like that movie with Rachel Lee Cook. What's your favorite Rachel Lee Cook movie? For me, it's... I mean, it's gotta be like Josie and the Pussycats, right? Like, I mean, antitrust is pretty bad. It's also very much a product of the times when people disliked Bill Gates. Now Bill Gates is like, hey, he's my cool billionaire uncle. Anyway, there is a weird, like, you know, again, I love my wife. We spend time together all the time. But it does make you, like, when one of you is away and you regress to singlehood for a week or a weekend, it's an interesting feeling. Like, Kay went to Japan by herself last year because I didn't want to go to Tokyo Game Show. And uh, when she came back, she was like... I can see, like, a use pattern in the apartment from the way that you lived your life. There's, like, footsteps from the bedroom to your office. There's footsteps from your office to the kitchen and from your office to the bathroom. And I was like, yeah, you pretty much... I, I left the house, like, four times in a week. And at least three of those times were to go to the grocery store to get enough food to, like, meal prep a huge... Uh, like lentil curry. Now was bad. Then it was just I recorded episodes, and then I sat in my office playing NHL 2019. And the first day I was like, "This reminds me of being a teenager." And like the second day, I was like, "Please come home." <laughs> it's not that it wasn't fun, but I was like, I had my fill pretty quickly. I've been there. I've done that for like a decade. I don't need to go back to that. Spirit Hearts? Okay. Well, I, I, we just can't afford to take that. It's a little too risky, you know what I mean? Let's hydrate here. This is not a- it's a dicey run, a little bit. Two and a half hearts puts us in a, in a sketched out circumstance here. Like, you might think the, the dangerous parts of the run are over. Oh, he's gotten three damage upgrades and a tears upgrade. Nah, dude. The only reason we were even able to get Sack Dagger uh, and we will not take that. But the only reason we were even able to get Sack Dagger was because of um, the Strength card. Were it not for that, we would uh, we would not have Sack Dagger right now. And this run would probably look about as bad as it actually is. It's certainly not unwinnable. But. Uh, It is 
in a dangerous spot. Allow me to also say, dude, I got pretty lucky. Oh, thank you. I got pretty lucky I didn't pick up Void. I could see, you know, a, like a 1 in 20 situation where I pick up Void because I'm like, well, you know, it'll hurt us now, but it'll be worth it later. And then it, we would just literally be dead. So I, I'm very thankful that didn't happen. So if we can live through this floor, um, odds are very strong. We will have HP, the uh, red heart that is. Was this room worth doing? Yeah, it kind of like it took a couple of years off my life, but simultaneously, uh, I think it was it was probably worth it. We've been playing pretty well. You haven't taken a whole heck of a lot of dumb damage, <laughs> dude. That was one of the smartest plays of my life. <laughs> To, to wedge myself in the corridor? Wise move. Wise move. Okay. Yo, you almost got me, you son of a gun. Like, I hope that it's becoming clear. I'm not just playing this up for humor's sake. Like, this is, uh... It's actually a little... It's a little touchy, dude. I'd love to... Like, renewable defense? Sure. It would be worth quite a lot. But, you know, it, it doesn't have to be, like, the be-all, end-all. I actually think I would, like, stop, actually, to not get any more active items. Um, it, I, I just, like, a couple of spirit hearts would really just leave me feeling like we're in a better position here. It's uh, asking quite a lot of me, especially, with, like, when we got Curse of the... When we got Curse of the Tower, this run, it, it did end up, yep, being on a little bit of a timer, because we could get hit for a, a hard and a half extremely easily. Thank God for that demon heart. Okay, I'm just trying to stay out of my own head here. Stop thinking about tonight's delicious uh, vindaloo inside of a flower pancake. Because you might not even get, you know yourself, Ryan. You might just end up, you know, oh, I got food in the fridge. I'll just have another chicken tortilla, but I'll supplement it with, uh, you know, a side salad or something like that. Because, you know, the whole thing, and it's always nice to order in when you get good food. But, you know, first off, yo, that was really dumb. First off, it takes a while. Secondly, it's expensive, and you know, thirdly, you could have the chicken tortilla. It's like a unit cost of $1.75. You could have it in your mouth within the next, uh, you know, two or three minutes if you really felt like it. Kate will come home and be like, what'd you have for dinner tonight? And I'll be like, the satisfaction of an economical dinner. <laughs> Another chicken tortilla, huh? Yeah. You got me. Alright, so I think, honestly, you'll never hear me say this. Or you won't hear me say this too often, I should say. Um, I think I kind of mind flooded myself on this run into believing the run was harder than it was. I think we should go to our item room and shop. Or at least get a, a shoop to whoop charge before the boss. Because it could be brownie, and that would be really bad. Uh, but I, I think I was doing better before I acknowledged that this run had difficulties associated with it, but we're really like, even if we get nothing amazing, couldn't resist, uh, from, from the shop or the item room here, we still stand a reasonably good chance, uh, to feel a lot better after this floor's over. Okay, well, first off, that's awesome. Um, and, uh... I think we will definitely take... Okay, never mind. Um, no, we're still going to use a bomb to do this. I'd like to get to 20 cents. Yeah. So BFF, uh, I think it's important not just for uh, Sacrificial Dagger, but also for, you know, Big Chub, who works with me and my dad at the pawn shop. Uh, but... Are people still doing that meme? I don't know. Respects paid. 
Uh, the, the Spirit Heart was also very advantageous for us to pick up, just because, I mean, this guy is not difficult, but he, he can annoy you. Brain actually overclocked itself in the process here. Good stuff, dude. That's the aggression you want to see. Okay, so we're actually going to have a good rate of fire, good damage stack, good HP for the next floor. How did we get there? Okay. All's forgiven. Anyway, that's... Apart from that, it's an it's a easy weekend, dude. Like, today's Friday. I got a dentist appointment tomorrow. My in-laws are coming up, like... It's Mother's Day, right? So... Again, consider this a, a too late warning. But hey, your mom, if you haven't called her yet, you can still call her and be like, Hey, mom, sorry, I forgot about Mother's Day. I've been real busy. At least give her the time of day, you know, if you got that kind of relationship. I, don't, I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to relate to your parents. But um, it's Mother's Day this weekend. So my Saturday is pretty easy. You might say, NL, are you going to watch the Formula One race? And I'll say, chat, absolutely not. It's, uh, it's another one of those races that's on at like 6 a.m. my time. And I might have, you know, I did think about getting up early to watch Bahrain a month ago. Or, yeah, it was like a month ago. Um, but I'm glad I didn't because... It, Mercedes just finished first and second again. So now, you know, I'm not necessarily an old hat Formula One fan, but, you know, you think I'm going to destroy my sleep schedule just to uh, wake up and watch either Valtteri Bottas or Lewis Hamilton get uh, first place? Absolutely not. You know, I'll just check the results in the morning. And, you know, if uh, Checo Perez ends up on the podium, well, then I missed it, okay? You don't understand that living in North America makes you very spoiled. And I say this, I'm resisting all temptation to say that it's America's fault. Because I don't think it is. But living in the same time zone as the United States of America makes it very easy to get indignant when things are not on at a time that's good for you. Because a lot of the world's entertainment is pretty much designed to capture you or, in this case, your neighbor as an audience, you know what I mean? I'm not saying, I'm saying quite the opposite of what you might interpret it as. I'm saying it's a bad habit. But you know, sometimes the the Canucks, they go uh, out east. They play a team like the Buffalo Sabres on it. No. I gotta think. <laughs> Play a team like the Buffalo Sabres on a Saturday? It's at 10 a.m. My time. And I go, that's ridiculous. Thank you. We should hold it, dude. Um, this run, it's proven to still be really spotty, to be honest. So here's what we're going to do. Peep this. Well worth it. And even though, you know, that timing is pretty good is still very easy to be like, the games are normally on at 7. You know, I feel for you if you live in a part of the... You're really like, you... Nobody could ever question your fandom for anything if you inconvenience yourself to watch it. I mean that sincerely. There are people who watch the NLSS um, even though it starts airing at like midnight their time and they might work at like, you know, not necessarily early, but early enough the next day that it inhibits their sleep. First off, Thank you for many reasons, but that's like basically the most flattering thing you could ever do for like a piece of content. Sometimes people tweet me and they're like, where's the X episode? And I'm like, oh, sorry, the backlog ran out. I'll have it up tomorrow. And they're like, rip, I stay up for these apps. And I'm like, dude, first off, you're making me feel like a piece of garbage. But secondly, you make me feel like a superstar. That's incredible. So I apologize whenever I miss it. You know, sometimes nature calls. I don't miss too many uploads. But, uh, either way, you know, I living in, uh, uh, next to the entertainment capital planet Earth is pretty much, like, it spoils you, dude, in, in a huge and, like, you know, a way that's probably annoying. 
Like, there are people who watch, like, the NHL in Sweden. Games are on at, like, 4 a.m. local time. I'm not willing to do that. You got me beat. So, I don't necessarily want to do this, but I feel like we have to do this. I am going... That's our secret room, right? Yeah. I know we had a moon card, but still. Um, I am going to go to the five room. And I'm going to play this floor over again. I think I've been playing a little bit like garbage. And there's no doubt about that. But the run is also tricky enough. One more boss item could really put us in the driver's seat. Curse of the Unknown is just its a slap in the face. But, well, we know we don't need to go that way. There is another dice room, which is kind of funny. So what, what do we got going on? I, I hate to say it, but this is one of those times we got a pivot... Pivot? We got to pivot to Isaac talk. Um, mostly because things are a bit touch and go. But uh, we, we have a huge advantage in one main category. Space bar item. Shoop the whoop. Being able to be used every room is pretty close to god tier. It might be a little shy, but not by much. So obviously we want that. We'll, we'll buy a bomb to facilitate it if necessary. If possible. <laughs> could we afford to walk on the spikes? Yes, we could afford to walk on the spikes. Do we want to walk on the spikes? Are you insane, dude? Have you been watching the run? We got to remember, I, I wouldn't necessarily say we have half HP. That, that it appears that we have. Although it appears like we have none at all right now. Um... But it's not too far off, because Curse of the Tower can just destroy you, you know? Like, getting hit once by a champion could spawn bombs. If you get hit by one of the bombs, you might die. Also, going through a little bit of, like, a crisis with respect to, like, how little damage we're doing to these guys right here. Enemies we do not kill immediately with Shoop the Whoop. Apparently, they're, they're toughing it out here. Um, obviously, like, we want to pick up the cancer item, but we got to... We got to put ourselves first. If we can pick it up while living, we should pick it up. Now, we're definitely, like, more in the clear. We did get a spirit heart. The spirit heart is Abaddon. We have two HP. I think we'd rather tackle it like this nonetheless. Okay. We're, we're borderline unkillable now. And... Did we get carried? 100%. Uh, but, you know, in my own defense, if I can offer something in my own defense. The thing is, it's not just true with Isaac. This is true with, like, any any conversation. You got to think very critically about conversation if somebody's trying to convince you of something. You can spin almost anything multiple ways, you know? I could say, oh, we're definitely going to go do the five room. Because if I don't do the five room, you know, I'm missing out on items. And I think we need all the items we possibly can get to survive this. Or I could say, uh, we're definitely not going to do the five room. Dude, are you insane? I don't want to do any more rooms than I have to on this little amount of HP. You know, it's like we're in full on womb protocol right now. We don't want to take any damage whatsoever. So we obviously we're not going to do that. Um... And b both of those, you know, opinions or statements are, I wouldn't say equally valid, but they're valid at different times, you know? If we take the five room and we get hit on our first room, we look like a dummy. If we take the five room and, you know, we get the kind of bounty that we got on this floor, we look like a genius. So, I, I'm just going to say that it was my, you know what, on the line. So, uh, you know, we, we made a decision that led to greatness. It's not always necessarily going to lead to greatness, but I appreciate it nonetheless. So, weirdly, like, this run, which uh, at one point appeared so difficult, will now seem like, at least temporarily, comically easy. Uh, I, I don't know... I'm, it's not a tough choice. It's just a tricky situation. Do you want to take an Eternal Heart? I mean, HP is a non-issue, um, and I'm not talking about what I'm eating for dinner tonight. Hi-yo! 
The only non issue I want to concern myself with is am I going to get regular non or garlic non? That's a joke. Obviously, if I were getting non, I would get garlic non because it's delicious. But I'm not going to get either non because it's kind of just empty carbohydrates. So I don't know, I really am not on like a low carbohydrate sort of diet sort of thing, but. You know, it still suffices to say if I'm gonna, you know, eat a carbohydrate-rich meal, I'm probably gonna try to make sure it's, you know, at worst, you know, potatoes or sweet potatoes or something like that. I don't necessarily want to, you know, just go straight up for flour and ghee, also known as clarified butter. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I mean, it is friggin' delicious. Okay, we're taking the eternal heart. Help. Nah, we're we're totally set. It it gets the blood pumping. We've had a couple, and we you know these are both good. Like this run and the run that we won, uh, because we got the D six room or the it might have been a one room. I can't remember. Either way, the the spirit is the same. You know, it saved us with the run reroll. Um, these are good wake up calls, cause you know were those runs amazing and we squandered the chances we had? No. But, we could have played better. Um, really just should have played better. Easy. Um, he's still alive. So it's just a good reminder that like, yeah, you won 40 whatever runs in a row. Um, first off, act like you've been there before. Secondly, don't let it get you into a false sense of security. I'll go ahead and say it. You have to be pretty good at Isaac to win 45 runs in a row. I think we're probably at the stage in Isaac's life cycle where winning 45 runs in a row probably justifies a loss or two. <laughs> I could point to this streak and be like, cool, dude. You know, next time I make one truly awful mistake, I'll be like, hey, remember that time... I have 45 runs in a row, now we're even. But it's a good reminder. You might be good, but you s there's no substitute for just doing well, you know? Not every run, you know, by definition, can, can be you performing at your best. That's just unrealistic. But trying your best is, you know is something that's within my realm of control, you know? Getting the anecdotes out is important, but also, you know, paying attention during the, you know, 10% of an Isaac run where you actually have to pay attention to... You know, it's one of those things that... What is it called? Like, the... It's the something principle. It's like, you know, 10% of the efforts generate 90% of the gain or something like that. That's basically what I'm getting at here. So give me this. We're not going to fight Delirium. Probably could get away with it on this run, but... Let me go. He actually shot the moon on that one. Anyway, it's gonna be a nice, like, low-key weekend. I'll tell you, dude, I, I'm well past, and it's not an age thing. Sometimes I get roasted because I, I do all these jokes. I'm a man, I'm 30. People tweet me and they're like, I'm 35 and I still go skydiving. Your life's not over. And I'm like, bro, enjoy your skydiving. But like, it was a joke. I'm living my best life. You know what I did last night? It was a long streaming day. You know, I start recording at like 11 a.m. with Dan and Mathis. And uh, I, f I finish, and it's pretty much work straight through. Uh, I finish at like 8.30, 9 p.m. That's like 10 hours of being always on. Uh, I, I cooked dinner. Which was not that good, but I tried. I mean, why are the... The, the meal prep service, why are you sending me tuna tataki, okay? That's something where the quality of the meal hinges completely on the cut of the tuna. The tuna wasn't bad, but it, it set me up for failure to begin with. Anyway, um, the reason they sent it is because we chose it, but let's just ignore that for the purposes of the bit. After that, I ran a bath. I shaved. Cleaned up the... You know, gross hair that gets everywhere when you shave and you got, like, you know, a pretty hairy dude. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see if we get a demon judgment. No demon judgment. All right, see you in heck, brother. Um, after I cleaned up, got in the bath, 
much the hunt for Red October. Never seen it before. That's right, Sean Connery playing a Russian uh, submarine captain. Alec Baldwin playing Jack Ryan. I can't go to the North Atlantic Ocean. I'm an analyst. And I gotta say, it was a great time. It wasn't uh, getting down with an underground rave at 3 a.m., but uh, you, you had a nice bath, relax, watch a good movie. Got a nice night's sleep. It felt good. So I'm, you know, you might say low-key weekend. It's, you know, it is a low-key weekend. But, you know, if you can take pleasure from the quiet things in life, I think that's a sign of, uh, not necessarily maturity, but a sign of skill. You know? Some people, in order to enjoy life, they gotta have, uh, they gotta have crazy experiences. And I would never, um, let me just say, you threw the first stones. <laughs> I'm not trying to say you shouldn't try to lead uh, an experience-driven life. That's not fair. I mean, you tie, you know, at 21, I went and taught English in Asia. Country I never been to, language I don't speak, career I never even wanted to be a part of. So I'm not above making some thrill-seeking decisions in my life. At least at one point. But to be able to enjoy just a... Uh, a Thomas Clancy film from the year 1990? Have a smile on my face instead of, you know, having to do the hip-hop dancing at the, at the supper clubs? Sorry, I had to... In order for the bit to work, I had to turn it back on myself and also make myself appear to be 100 years old. You know what's weird is I've been watching... Uh, this documentary about Prohibition. It's almost over. It's by Ken Burns. Um, it's a PBS documentary. It's, it's famous. I'm not suggesting that like I discovered this documentary or anything. Um, but when I was a kid and I saw a photo from the 1920s, I was like, dang, bro. You're old. You're old as dirt, actually. This is like another planet. I don't know if it's a symptom of getting older or, or a symptom of having lived... Uh, for longer but now that I look at a like photo of the 1920s I'm like dude these people are just like us <laughs> I, it's I, I think it is like perspective that comes with just not being older but having lived longer where I'm like man we got it. like the world's not necessarily in a great place okay but like I've been alive for 30 years if I was born 30 years earlier, I would have been like, I mean, too young for Nam, but definitely like growing up right in the middle of Cold War paranoia. Zero question about that. If I was born 60 years before I was born, old enough to lie about my age to go serve in the Second World War be like 17 the year it ended so maybe not but it'd be close but you know it's certainly like the right age for the korean war it's you know i'm not saying that we should be thankful for what we have necessarily and like you know hand wave all criticism i'm just saying like when i was younger i was like dude second world war that was like a thousand years ago i mean i i knew at the time because i was still pretty shrewd back then good at trivia that is you know 1939 and 1945 but like simultaneously i was like that's we weren't even close the older i get now i'm like dude we dodged a friggin' bullet <laughs> we might dodge a bullet in the future who knows if i had been born 30 years later you know my city would be well probably not 30 years later vancouver will be underwater you know, if I'd been born, like, you know, 70 years later, I'd probably have to pay it some real, you know... I mean, it's not that I don't care about climate change. It's just I'm not actively, like, piling sandbags up on the on the seawall. You know what I mean? All right, this run turned out. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!